Uh, so up next, um, we have uh, Stefan Schmidt, uh, the co-founder and CTO of Unibright. Uh, hi, Stefan. How are you? Hi, Kyle. I'm fine. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. I will try to uh, share my screen if you make me host. Oh. There you are, sir. So Stefan's going to talk to us about uh, sort of in that in that um, onto the the next part of this narrative, right? Um, we've talked about uh, the baseline protocol and its inception, and a little bit about open source. We've talked about Nats and and how it's a mature, uh, very mature enterprise messaging uh, open source project uh, that can achieve massive scale. We talked about how we're incorporating Nats into the baseline protocol, and now uh, Stefan is going to talk a bit about uh, Unibright and how. Um, uh, base, how, how to baseline your ERP system, uh, it, probably heavily in the context of SAP. Stefan, I'll, uh, I'll stop talking. All right. Can you already see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So yeah, thanks again uh, for having me. Thanks for the opportunity to present here at ETH Atlanta. So especially thanks to you, Kyle, for hosting uh, the event and bringing people together. This is uh, what open source also is about. Uh, yeah, short remark on my person. I am CTO of Unibright. We are a German blockchain integration company. Um, I'm also a member of the technical steering committee within Baseline. Um, my personal background is uh, more on the techie side, so I'm a master of computer science. Uh, I love hard rock music and soccer, and I speak English with a German accent, so I hope you don't mind. I think I'm the only non-native speaker today, so um, yeah. I try to make myself audible as possible. So yeah, baselining your ERP, uh, quite a big topic. Uh, if you just take a look at the, at the buzzwords, so perhaps uh, let's take a look what ERP or enterprise resource planning um, is all about. If you look up just one of the basic definitions on the internet, you would just find that ERP is the integrated management of main business processes, often in real time and mediated by software and technology. Uh, perfect uh, short description, but there are so many details that we could dive into that I think this format will not be enough. So um, let's just extract some of the key concepts that I want to talk about today in regards to baseline. Um, so we talk about integration, about the main business processes and uh, the mediating software part. So as for integration, um, a definition could be that integration is the process of bringing together the component uh, subsystems into one system, or a uh, bigger picture, the process of linking together different computing systems and software applications physically or functionally to act as a coordinated whole. So um, I think uh, integration is just the, the key concept uh, that also brings all the benefits of the baseline protocol to life. And this is why uh, not only for, uh, for in front of the background of being um, CTO of an integration company, um, it's just the emphasis of this, uh, of this presentation will be on, on integration. And main business processes supported by ERPs uh, can cover the financial accounting part, human resources, manufacturing, order processing, supply chain management, uh, CRM. And um, it's important if you, if you think about very big enterprises, then you will have integration on different levels. So even an application to application integration within one big enterprise can be a challenge on its own. Uh, and if we then um, extend the scope to B2B integration and uh, perhaps even across borders or, or uh, currency borders, uh, it gets even more complicated, but also a very um, exciting uh, subject and level. And mediating software, um, I understand this in the scope of this presentation as, as middleware or as object translators, as integration engines. So every software that somehow helps to, um, to bridge the gap between different participants of an um, integration process. So just taking uh, a look at, at blockchain, there are different approaches on how to understand uh, blockchain in regards to business integration or uh, blockchain 
um, in regards to enterprise usage in, in general. Uh, and I think everybody in the space can tell their own uh, stories on that, especially in 2019. Um, when a lot of pitches towards enterprises for, for uh, using blockchain were covered by concerns on blockchain in general or um, confusing the terms or understanding blockchain equal to Bitcoin. And um, yeah, I, th I think uh, fortunately we, uh, we, are, we passed this phase um, and now can take a look uh, on blockchain from the different perspective in regards to business integration. And John already mentioned that in his, um, in his intro statement, um, that there are different perspectives. So perhaps a very early perspective on how to understand blockchain was more like putting data on the chain. So understanding blockchain just as a distributed database. Uh, which does not work uh, in its entire uh, idea. And the effect on integration is actually low because um, technically the place where you store data does not mean so much on how it can be integrated into processes or existing tech stacks. So um, yeah, let's, let's move on to the next phase. Um, putting logic on the chain. So understanding blockchain as a distributed world computer with uh, smart contracts enabling a common logic across all participants. Um, nice idea, uh, also perhaps not that scalable, at least not on the current technical level. And again, the effect on integration uh, is not that big because even if you put the logic um, in a smart contract on the blockchain, then you still have the uh, situation that many bigger enterprises have their ERP system in place, perhaps since decades, still uh, still paying the license uh, costs for, for another 10 years or 20 years. So it's not that easy to put just everything on the blockchain. And uh, putting trust on the chain, so understanding blockchain as a common frame of reference or notary service. Yeah, uh, good, good take. And uh, still there are some uh, things left to be tackled um, in terms of understanding blockchain as, an, uh, as a system of, of uh, enabling integration. Um, so what is needed? If, you, if we want uh, to use blockchain for business integration, then um, what is actually needed? Uh, I listed up some, but not all items. Um, so an easy access for all participants it's mainly about smaller companies. So for example, if you have a buyer supplier set up and you have also smaller suppliers, they have to be integrated into business processes. And it, it should not be the only way for them to be integrated uh, to just use the, the main ERP of the leading uh, buyer, but they also have to have a way to get an easy access uh, to onboard even if they are not using an ERP system at all, or if they're perhaps uh, just mm, organizing their stuff in, in Excel or spreadsheets as they are ERPs. It's nothing to be uh, ashamed of. Uh, as long as you can be part of an integration process, you're, you're good to go. Um, Paper use uh, is tackling the, the fact that many integration processes are occurring on an ongoing basis, some, some of them even real time. But there are also processes where data is exchanged, uh, for example, only once a month, and the integration solution has to be uh, still to be accessible for all participants, but just when they use it. So if blockchain should be considered as uh, a cost saving component so that enterprises actually decide to go with blockchain, it has to be ensured that for blockchain based integration, there is a pay per use model in place, and that you do not pay um, for something that you only need once a month. Uh, the no restriction in usage is uh, pretty much addressing the same issue, not on a um, budget level, so to say, but rather on, on the technical level to, to make it easy to um, access and integrate. Process orientation and domain models. Yeah, this is a, a crucial point, uh, which in my or in our Unibright opinion, uh, is very often forgotten or addressed too late when tackling integration scenarios, because no matter how great um, an underlying technology is, 
the actual success of an integration process will also be measured uh, by how smooth and seamlessly it presents itself to the to the actual end user. So um, therefore, it's really uh, important to to address the domain specialists and uh, on a business process level and provide domain models that uh, the business user would understand. For example, a procurement specialist should be allowed to design his process um, based on models for proposals or purchase orders or invoices and not based on a protocol or a code or technical adapters. Um, and this is also addressed by low code, adding to the former point. So the more a domain specialist will be able to stay and concentrate on his level of abstraction, the easier it will be to establish successful integration processes. Um, and if no, or only low code is needed, uh, even better. Yeah, high value and benefit from blockchain. So if blockchain is not just considered to be a buzzword, um, but brings actual value and benefits, we should show these benefits and we should name them so everybody sees them and uh, can make use of them. So the, the latest point um, leads to the major concerns of enterprises about using a public blockchain uh, for business processes privacy, permission, and performance. And um, this is also the main reason why many reports on proof of concepts in the blockchain space still go like, uh, yeah, it's productive, but we can show you because we just set up a private chain. Uh, in integration processes, though, a private chain with, uh, for example, in an extreme scenario, just one node supervised by the big player in the process, is perhaps not that helpful um, showing the advantages of, of uh, distributed technology and perhaps not that helpful in bringing integration as a concept forward. So baseline is uh, addressing exactly that, what is needed um, and is a solution to these concerns of, uh, of using the mainnet as part of uh, a middleware. Um, I will not dive into the technical details too much, uh, and the basic ideas already have been uh, covered by, by John. Uh, so the, it, it's to keep the data in the respective ERPs of all participants and using the baseline pattern um, as an integrative middleware to establish a common frame of reference in the public mainnet. Um, from an architecture side, this is how it was presented at the, at the baseline launch. So the idea is that every participant in a integration process will run their own tech stack of microservices that fulfill different uh, tasks in the, in the process, like queuing and persistence, messaging, as we just learned, um, for example, with, with NETS, uh, zero knowledge proofs and uh, API integration. And then notarizing the current state of an integration process on the mainnet without actually showing who did business with whom and what data, uh, but keeping a level of, of privacy so that uh, participants are in, engaged to be part of that integration process. Um, we can take a short look at how we um, did it in a SAP uh, Dynamics 365 demo. So this is the, the architecture as how it was presented um, during that demo that we did together with, with Kyle's team at Provide and Daniel's uh, team at Envision Blockchain. Um, you can check the, the complete uh, demo walkthrough and on the baseline landing page and of course check the code in GitHub. Um, the use case was a uh, business process automation across uh, SAP RP and Microsoft D365 uh, via baseline. So uh, it was a procurement case of exchanging um, requests for proposals, uh, referencing proposals, uh, and then purchase orders and so on. And what we did here is um, providing an automated setup of a baseline environment for every participant so that they just have the same tech stack that they can all use on their uh, on their end. 
And uh, based on that, every participant could use this stack to exchange data, uh, integrate it into their um, ERP, uh, proof and verify the current state of the business workflow uh, on chain. Um, the three boxes you see here is the is the main architecture. So um, the baseline containers and then some added layers from from provide and from Unibright ensured that all the different participants uh, participants in that process had the same um, level of how to connect to baseline, so to say, using a proxy. And then we had different implementations of this pattern. So, for example, the buyer role was uh, done with an SAP system using the Unibright connector. Uh, one of the suppliers were um, done by a Dynamics system using the a vision blockchain connection, also connecting to the underlying tech stack. And by this, we could add many suppliers, many more suppliers, perhaps using just another ERP or using no ERP at all, but uh, Excel or local database, all connecting to the tech stack um, and making use of the, of the baseline protocol as a pattern. So um, we provided, uh, we created a, mini a minimum domain model and also an automatic generated service access layer on a RESTful API. So this is uh, what I've been talking about earlier to meet the actual process specialists on their domain level. And they should be able to think about this process in terms of proposals, purchase orders, master service agreements, requests for proposals, and not so much in, in how it's done technically. Um, so from the SAP perspective that, that we covered within Unibright, we connected to that um, proxy by mapping big SAP objects meaningful to that small minimum domain models that all the participants in the demo used. Um, and for the user, the integration uh, should look smooth. So um, here you can see that the user just used his well-known front ends from, for example, SAP on the left side or Dynamics on the, on the right side. And the integration, the actual integration is, uh, is happening uh, in the background, implementing the baseline pattern and including proofs and verifies on that this uh, synced workflow between a request for proposals on one side, answering with a proposal from the other party, answering with a purchase order and so on, uh, is all in sync and all of the participants rely on the same state of the process. Um, and this is uh, made available by uh, a public available blockchain. So perhaps should some remarks on um, Unibright and, and Baseline. So um, perhaps it's, it's important again to, to mention that Baseline itself is not a protocol and uh, it's explicitly, uh, it's an explicit demand request or wish from the, from the Baseline community that actual um, enterprises take this baseline approach and build products around it. So that's what we also do um, at Unibright, uh, being in the space of business integration with blockchain for around three years now. Um, and our approach is basically to uh, support all that, what I mentioned earlier, what we think is needed. So we have visual definitions of processes and circuits. Uh, we try to generate as many objects as possible automatically, um, like code generation and API generation. Um, together with, with uh, provi provide our partner, we also offer just one click automatic deployment. So uh, to, to make it short, to make it as easy as possible for a participant to be part of an integrated process via baseline and to staying on the domain or process level as long as possible and not having to care so much about the technical details uh, and the underlying details. Um, also, what we, ought to, uh, what we also offer is an integrated payment model. So talking about the, the idea of, of a gas station, I, I can totally second what John said earlier that it's not very likely for, um, for big enterprises to, to hold crypto, especially if you think 
of cross-chain scenarios where you have perhaps um, another blockchain or a private blockchain um, as, as another um, state machine that you want to baseline with another chain or another ERP. And you have to care about different um, transaction cost models underlying. So the idea is to have, an, uh, from our side, to have an integrated payment model with the, with the Unibri token, also including the transaction costs of the underlying mainnet. And um, one of the tasks will be how to integrate a concept of a gas station here so that in the end, uh, the end user just pays for what he sees and uh, uses and perhaps not care so much about the um, underlying payment model as long as we make uh, or at, uh, that we see some benefit from using a programmable token for example to make payment processes or subscription models more um, easier and uh, perhaps more auto auto uh, automated then um, this is a win-win for for all participants yeah so from 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 our side uh, perhaps as an outlook um, then the next steps of showing how to integrate uh, ERPs with the, with the baseline protocol or the baseline pattern, how to baseline your ERP. The next weeks and months will be again about integration, but not so much about technical integration, but uh, about integrating as many participants and player as, as possible within the, um, the organization of baseline. So finding use cases, working on, on pilots and this is something that I want to mention personally that I really like about the baseline initiative that it's very much about teamwork. So um, we already learned and got to know great, great people just by working on demos together. Uh, so not only those who um, were part of the SAP D365 uh, demo, but also many other individuals, enterprises and we can also tell that there's a big demand for, for baseline um, and bigger enterprises perhaps that are not interested in the first place to contribute to an open source model, but uh, who are very interested in using the actual standards because they look for a common frame of reference for a message bus that's always on and not restricted and makes, uh, makes it easier for them to integrate um, ecosystems and communities. So, Given that, the next weeks and months, uh, from our perspective, will be much about um, presenting demos and proof of concepts and, of course, extracting all the learnings that we have within these cases to provide to the protocol, um, to build our products around it, uh, to connect to other products that are built around it by other companies, uh, defining, defining standards and uh, bringing the complete topic of um, enterprise mainnet closer to the real world and to drive adoption here. So yeah, so far for this uh, presentation. Thanks again, Kyle and Provide for setting this up. Um, also for in inviting me. And if you have any, any questions, feel free to uh, contact me personally um, at my email. Or, uh, of course, be sure to check out baseline, the code, the documentation, and it's um, a very good starting point to just uh, start with baselineprotocol.org and you find everything also about the mentioned demos here. Thank you. Thanks, Stefan. Awesome.